Good evening. I'm Fred McMurray, and I, uh... Well, I'm Fred McMurray. I've got a secret brought to you by Bristol Myers, makers of Bufferin, the modern pain remedy that gives you fast pain relief without upset stomach. Bristol Myers brings you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. <laughs> Thank you, good friends, and a thousand welcomes to I've Got a Secret. I would like to have you meet our sterling panel, as though you didn't know them as well as you know your own face. I would like to introduce these faces by name, Bill Cullen, Betsy Palmer, and Henry Morgan, and Bess Meyerson, and that's us. <laughs> Assuming now that the panel is ready to play the game, eager, willing, let us then have our first contestant. Will you come in, please, sir? <laughs> Will you tell the panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? George Pernicano from San Diego, California. Mr. Pernicano, P-E-R-N-I-C-A-N-O, from California. Um, that's quite a mustache you have there. What, uh, what length is it from tip to tip? It's about 15 inches tip to tip. About 15 inches, mm hmm I also couldn't help but noticing that you had a rope in your hand. <laughs> Presumably there's something attached to the other end of it, so uh, let's whisper it to the audience and we'll find out what it is. <laughs> well, I find, I find that very interesting, but there must be more. Now, here we go, panel. This concerns something um, that he has, the best definition I can give you. We'll start the question. Let's start with Bess tonight, shall we? Bess? George, may I call you George? Yes. Could you possibly have your barber on the other end of that rope? No. <laughs> Imagine you'd have to carry him around with you. Uh, <laughs> that's a fantastic. Does that hurt? That Not thing? a bit. No. Uh, this thing that you have over there, is it alive? I believe so. Is it some kind of animal? Some yes. kind of animal, yes? yes. Is it, it's not a human being, is it? Yes. Oh, it is. A member of your family? No. Somebody we know? The question was, somebody we, we know? We know. Is it somebody the panel knows? No. All right, $20 down, $60 to go. And we go, please, to Bill Cullen. George, does this person on the end of the rope, I assume they're on the end of the rope, the other the person. Yes. Do they have anything to do with your mustache? Uh, I think we have to say that there is an indirect connection. <laughs> Actually, he has nothing to do with his mustache as far as having to do with it, except does, that as we play the game, there is a connection. Does this person who, on the other end of the rope occasionally contact your mustache, or vice versa? No. It's pretty hard to miss, I'll tell you. You just got Gary in the ear there. I was going to say, you have no, idea what a tick <laughs> have no idea what a ticklish job it was <laughs> listening to his secret. <laughs> uh... The person has no particular connection with your mustache. It's, uh, but do they have a connection with you? Uh, do they perform a service for you? No. Are they... All right, $40 gone, $40 to go. Betsy, don't look so woeful there. Well, no, I was just thinking, Mr. Pernicano, um, if that person wasn't wrapped up by that rope, would there something terrible happen? No. You mean like, is it a wild man from Borneo well, I mean, or something? Who ever heard of tying up somebody with a rope? Unless there was, they were trying to keep him from doing something. Whoever heard of tying up someone person... with anything else? <laughs> oh, string. Oh, all right. Things like that. Is there, does that... Did you have to bring that person here with this rope? Or it would never have come? No. <laughs> no, he was under no compulsion. And so, as water is handed to a coughing Henry Morgan, we will take ten seconds out for coughing purposes. Poor baby. Uh, you ready, old friend? Go ahead. Does the... Uh, the um, person on the other end of the rope have a mustache? Yes. Uh -huh. oh. Is it bigger than yours? Yes. <laughs> Henry, water does a great deal for you. I recommend it in the future. Right? <laughs> the answer was written on the inside. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, the way things are going nowadays, people believe that. Show them the inside of the cup. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's, let's meet the gentleman on the other end of the cup. Uh, other end of the rope. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> All right. Will you tell the audience and the panel what your name is, please? Johnny Todd. Mr. Todd and you, too, are from... San Diego, California. All right, let's consolidate forces here and find out about these mustaches. Did you grow yours for a contest or something, sir? No, I just uh, get tired of trimming the mustache, and I just let it, let it grow, and it uh, got to be my trademark, so I'm stuck with it. Well, how long ago did you start this, uh, about this 12, lip bush? About 12 years ago. About 12 years ago, yeah. huh? Let's get back to you, Mr. Todd. Yours, which is the longer one. Well, first of all, I better prove what I'm talking about so that there'll be no doubts. Uh, from tip to tip, straighten it out for me. It's not too much of a strain. There we go. Fifteen inches. Fifteen inches? Now, sir, with all your might and main, it goes way out to here. You're cheating. Almost twenty inches. Not quite twenty inches. Now. One question. What happens to it in the rain? Down. Just goes down. You look like Fu Manchu, huh? Yes, sir. Well, thank you both very much for being with us. Your Bristol Myers gift packages will be waiting for you off stage, as well as the money you've won. And thanks an awful lot and happy mustache. <laughs> May I have our next guest, please? Will you come in? <laughs> you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from. Jacob S. Schneider from New York City. Mr. Schneider, and he is from New York. Now, Mr. Schneider, if you whisper your secret, we'll show it to the folks. Here we go. Oh, come now, come now, come now. Come now. All right, panel, this concerns something. Mr. Schneider's secret concerns something that he owns. And let's start with Bill Cullen this time. Is uh, this a one-of-a-kind thing, Mr. Schneider? I believe it is, sir. Uh, wow. Let's go back and uh, ask you to rephrase the question or to explain it. How do you mean, is it a one-of-a-kind thing? The thing that he owns, is it a one-of-a-kind? Mm-hmm. I think we must say, Mr. Schneider, that there are other things like it, but not to the degree that Mr. Schneider has it. To the degree? Yes. Is the thing you own the largest of its kind? I believe so, yes, sir. It is so believed, yes. Is it alive? No. Twenty dollars down, sixty to go, and we're on to Betsy. Do you have it here with you this evening, Mr. Schneider? I can't hear you. Do you have it here this evening with you? No, ma'am. No? Is this something that you keep inside of your house? No, ma'am. Do you have to keep this outside? It's so large? No, ma'am. Do you keep it under any sort of a um, dwelling no, of some I do, sort? I do, in a you dwelling. You do? Under an umbrella? Uh, under an umbrella? No, hardly. No. Forty dollars <laughs> down, forty dollars to go. Henry Morgan's up. You keep it in a bank. No, man. <laughs> that's a big no, sir. What? <laughs> that's a fellow over there. No, uh, uh, I, I was... You I'm sorry. You, you, uh, uh, when Betty... What's that, Marion? <laughs> Henry's been nice. taking diction lessons from Marion Lauren, I think. That, <laughs> you said that you did. did. <laughs> All right, $60 down, $20 to go, we go to Bess. You keep it in its own dwelling. I do. Yes. Um, it's, hmm. It, it, it's kept under its own roof. It's not in the house and it's not outside, is it? No. In a... When you say its own roof, you imply that it owns the roof. It's kept inside of some sort of building. True. That's right. Is that correct? True. <laughs> An armadillo. And um, this... <laughs> Eighty dollars down. Panel, Mr. Great. Schneider's secret is that he owns 450,000 phonograph records. And according to High Fire Review magazine, this is the world's largest recording... Uh, collection. <laughs> Mr. Schneider, how many uh, record collectors are there in the world as a rough estimate? About uh, two million. About two million? Yes. You get your records by uh, how? By barter? By... by barter, by exchange, by purchase from all over the world. Now you say all over the world. What are some of the company, uh, some of the countries that you have bartered with? Uh, South America, Italy, Switzerland, Asia, Africa, anywheres in the globe, I get communications and records. Well, now, panel, we thought that tonight you might like to hear some of these truly rare recordings, 
And we also want to see how good you are at recognizing some of the artists on the records. Now, Henry, you shouldn't have any trouble because you used to MC a radio show that went just this way, trying to identify famous voices on records. So we'll hold you to last in case you have heard any of these items before. Um, can we open the curtains, please, fellas? I have here a loudspeaker, which I'm only bringing down so that the panel will get a good shot at these voices so they can really try to hear what's going on. All right, now, panel, our engineers are all set up to start playing an excerpt from one of the records. First, we'll show the audience the name, but now listen. First hand up was Henry Morgan, and so we'll go to Henry Morgan. Yes, Henry. John McCormick? John McCormick? No. Bill Cullen had his hand up next. Tulula Bankhead? <laughs> John Houston? No, Betsy. I don't mean John Houston. I mean Walter Houston. She, she means Walter. Can you tell me, sir, the name of the recording artist? Valentino. Rudolph Valentino. Rudolph Valentino in his first and only recording, the Kashmiri <laughs> song recorded in 1923. And so, all right, uh, let's uh, show the audience who comes next. You think you are hearing my voice. Oh, sure. But unless you know how to use your gramophone properly, what you are hearing may be something grotesquely unlike any sound. All right, let's go to Henry on it. Henry's got the answer That's here. That's George Bernard Shaw. Are you, did you recognize it as the recording or because, I mean, because you'd heard the recording before or because of uh, the voice? I don't know. Well, that's fair enough, answer. All right, now may we have the next one, please. Tell me where he is. Tell me where he is. Tell me what he does. Tell me who. All right, let's cut it down. If Bill Cullen's hand was up first, I'm yes. not, and I'm not kidding this time. To little bank, bank head. Head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first record she ever made, called "Don't uh, Tell Him What Happened to Me." All right, now see if you can get this next one. It is in French. It is a speaking artist. <laughs> I, Bess Meyerson was the first to have her hands in the air. Yes, Bess. Sounds like a French Billy Burke. <laughs> Sounds like, like a French Billy Burke. That's not right. Yes, the lady Burke. with the wooden leg. Um, what is her name? Sarah Bernhardt. Bernhardt. Sarah Bernhardt. Yeah. That's exactly it. What a nice way to be remembered. <laughs> the lady with the wooden leg. It was recorded around 1908, and I believe that is perhaps your rarest record, is it not? It is my rarest record. All right. Now let's get on to the next one from Mr. Schneider's collection. What will they do when you are far away and I am blue? What will they do? I find a completely blank panel over there. Uh, let me give you this hint. Uh, he is uh, currently appearing on Broadway, and in the uh, Broadway show in which he appears, he sings. Walter Pigeon? Walter Pigeon is right. <laughs> Recorded in the 1920s and very rare. Now, let's see the name of the next person from Mr. Schneider's collection, please. The principles for which we stand are the principles of fair play and a square deal for every man and every woman in the United States. No. A square deal politically, a square deal in matters social and industrial. I'm sure you're right. The phrase square deal doesn't give it to you? Square. He had a later relative who... Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt. Recorded there in 1912. Uh, now, have we time for more? All right, fine. Now, here is another one, a, a singing star of her era. I'm 
getting no recognition from the panel. So, Mr. Mr. Schneider, would you tell us? Lillian Russell. Lillian Russell, and every time she sang, people dropped dead in the aisles, threw their babies out of the balcony. It was a big thing. <laughs> what year is that? 1912. All right, and finally, we, this will be our last one of the evening. I wish we could go on, because this is fascinating. And this is a living artist. Listen. Here we go. not living, unfortunately. Uh, Jeanette McDonald is, but neither of those is the correct answer. The correct answer is Gloria Swanson. Oh. Gloria Swanson. That's good. Mr. Snyder, it's been a fascinating <laughs> thing listening to all these things. I want to see you backstage. I got some home I think you might like to have. I want you to have this Bristol Myers uh, package from us, please, the gift package and your $80 that you have won. Come see us again. Thank you. Now, my friends, here is one more record for Mr. Schneider's collection that I would very much like to have you listen to. May we hear it, please, fellas? All I want is just one girl, but I have to have one girl. I could really use more, even three or four, but one is enough. All I want is just one moon. Is that voice familiar to you? Well, it's the voice of our special guest for tonight when he was singing with the very famous Gus Arnheim Orchestra. He is the star of the U.S. Steel Hour's forthcoming spectacular on CBS February 10th called The American Cowboy. Here is Mr. Fred McMurray. I thought a little bit like a girl, you know. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> Sound like a girl? When was that made, right? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Lillian and Russell and I, uh, she was in one recording studio and I was in the next. <laughs> no, it wasn't that long ago. It was about 19... Uh, Oh, gosh, about 1930, I think. Eric. I know. I was around long yes, about kind of dates us, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I'm happy to be dated. It dates me. I don't yes. think it dates you. No, so we're happy to be alive. <laughs> Fred, uh, what is it, your secret for tonight? Well, Jerry, I tell you, as a matter of fact, uh, I don't know whether you heard me, but I got kind of hung up on the introduction there because I was supposed to say I got a secret, and I didn't have a secret. I haven't got a secret. This, I know, comes as a shock to you, but uh, this don't, is kind of a... Don't worry. I have a secret for you that is built in a secret you didn't even know you had. Wonderful. Mm. Tonight, six years ago, tonight... You made your first appearance on I've Got a Secret, so this is your sixth anniversary. You mean to the day? Not quite to the day, to the week. You know, to I didn't think it was that long ago. Yeah. You know? So I figured that we ought to have a sixth anniversary celebration. Well, fine. We ought to have flowers or something, haven't we? Well, not flowers. What I thought would be that on an anniversary, it's customary to give gifts. How would you, the members of the audience, like it if Fred McMurray were to give each one of you here a gift to take home with you? <laughs> Well, I must say that's, uh, that's uh, very generous of him. <laughs> what are, uh, I mean, what am I giving them? Well, now, let's say this was your 25th anniversary. You'd have to give each one of them something made of silver. Well, I'm glad I'm not here uh, 17 years from now or something. On your 50th, on the other hand, it would have to be something made of gold. Well, we won't worry about that one because I'm... Uh, well, neither one of us. You know, unless things pick up. I mean, <laughs> But on the other hand, this being your sixth, we looked it up, and it turns out the sixth anniversary, what do you think you're going to get? Candy. Oh, good. Good, I'll go out and get some. Don't bother. Don't bother. I hope bother. everybody's on a diet, that's all. <laughs> Don't bother. I am foresighted, if nothing else. Oh, wonderful. We have a basket for you and you a just... basket for me, and we will go out in our audience. We will give everybody in the audience a piece of candy. Oh, good. 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 Uh, what about the panel? Oh, the panel will now, unfortunately, we'll not have enough left over for the panel. But don't worry, because I've arranged it so that right after the show, I'm not after the show, but after our secret, the panel can pull their own taffy. We're going to have a taffy pulling contest from the panel. Oh, good. <laughs> you mean that? So you mean this is my secret, huh? That's your secret, furnished you by us, that they're going to have a taffy you, pulling buddy. contest. Thank you. All right, let's go down to the studio audience, shall we? I'll go this way. All right, happy anniversary, friend. <laughs> Here we go. Send the panel back in, please, if you will, as we venture oh. forth in our studio audience. Hello. <laughs> Help yourself, please. I'll probably trip on this thing, huh? That's yeah, in the little girl in the red hat. Look at that. Hello, like how are you? I blink letters, you know. Oh, hello, panel. Hi. Hello. Uh, panel, uh, Fred McMurray's secret concerns something that is going to happen. 
What are you giving away? So, uh, let's start the questioning, I guess, with Betsy. Um, Fred? I'm too busy. I'm sorry here. <laughs> you are? Uh, is this going to happen as a result of what you're giving away out there? Because what? Is this going to happen because of what you're giving away out there? Oh, I don't think necessarily. Now, no. what are you giving away? Candy. Candy? Candy, huh? Yeah. Uh, is this something that's going to All happen... to this lady. <laughs> is this going to happen to the people in the audience? I beg your pardon. Is I this going to happen to the people in the audience? No, no. No, it doesn't happen to the people in the audience. I better pay attention here a little yes, more. Yes, you bet. Sir. Yes, we have gone down. Uh, how about we've lost what? Twenty dollars. We're down sixty dollars to go. Henry Morgan's off. Is it the kind of thing that's going to happen to somebody? Yes. 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 Yeah. Somebody we know. Oh yes. Gary. Oh no, not Gary. You. No, not me. Bill. Bill who? Oh, uh, Bill Austin. <laughs> Bill who? Bill Carter party. No. <laughs> All right, there's $40 I, I, down, $40 to go. And by the way, we are very grateful to the Barton Candy Company for furnishing these, uh, us these fine Barton candies and also helping us make the whole spot. You'll have to wait, friend. Making the whole Just spot possible. It. Pass it on down. Let's go on to uh, Best, please. Yes. Uh, Fred, this thing that's going to happen is going to happen to someone on the panel. Yes. Yes. Is it uh, one of the girls? Girls. One oh, of the girls? Well, I'd say two of the girls, as a matter of fact. Both girls? going to happen to us? All of us. What? To all of us on the panel? Yes. Oh, all that's of you on it. The panel. To all of us on the panel. Well, there you are. These bags are so noisy, aren't they? I can't hear. <laughs> I was going to say, everybody's rustling. Friends, no rustling of the bags now. Please, please, please. $60 down and $20 to go. We go to Bill Cullen. How about you folks in the balcony? It's... Or the balcony. Is it going to happen? What'd you say, what? Bill? Is it going... Is it a physical thing? What if I hit thing? somebody? I don't know what I'm covered for this sort of thing. Here. Is... Never mind. Is it a physical thing that's going to happen to the panel, Fred? It's going to happen to the panel, yes. Physical. And physical, yes. Physically? Physical. Yes. Yes. Uh, Tonight. Well, it seems now. that we have lost our $80 by George. Let's get back up on the stage, Fred, if we can, no, please. Candy. I couldn't there we go. <laughs> oh, you don't want the candy. <laughs> panel? <laughs> Just give it down to the folks in the audience. Panel, it was six years ago this week that Fred McMurray made his first appearance on I've Got a Secret. So this is an anniversary night. Oh, the sixth great. year is the candy anniversary. Oh. So he's been giving candy to the audience. No, now, unfortunately, by the time we finish feeding everybody downstairs and in the balcony, there'll be none left for you. Oh. Oh. Great. Worry not. We have arranged that you can make your own candy. Will you open the curtains, please? Like well, not it. make it exactly. Like it. Not exactly. <laughs> Nothing like a good old taffy pull. <laughs> we'll take Beth Meyerson and Henry Martin on that side. Or you will come in right here. Betsy, you go down there. Hurry, Henry. Hurry, Henry. 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 What do you do? Well, kill him. Now, now pull your taffy, friends. There you go. Now pull it out. That's it. <laughs> Don't chop it. <laughs> We're losing over here, I think. <laughs> Do I got another suit? Fred, wave to the people. 
I've got a secret was brought to you by Bristol Myers, makers of Hypana, now with germ killing hexachlorophane. Hypana kills the gay germs by the million. And by Buffering for fast pain relief without upset stomach. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Be sure to watch Crystal Meyer Show Staccato on another network. See your local listing for time and station. This is John Cannon speaking. Good evening. I'm Fred McMurray, and I, uh... Well, I'm Fred McMurray. <laughs> I've got a secret brought to you by Crystal Myers, makers of Bufferin, the modern pain remedy that gives you fast pain relief without upset stomach. Bristol Myers brings you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you, good friends, and a thousand welcomes to I've Got a Secret. I would like to have you meet our sterling panel, as though you didn't know them as well as you know your own face. I would like to introduce these faces by name, Bill Cullen, Betsy Palmer, and Henry Morgan, and Bess Meyerson, and that's us. <laughs> Assuming now that the panel is ready to play the game, eager, willing, let us then have our first contestant. Will you come in, please, sir? Will you tell the panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? George Pernicano from San Diego, California. Mr. Pernicano, P-E-R-N-I-C-A-N-O, from California. Um, that's quite a mustache you have there. What, uh, what length is it from tip to tip? It's about 15 inches tip to tip. About 15 inches, mm hmm I also couldn't help but noticing that you had a rope in your hand. Presumably, there's something attached to the other end of it, so uh, let's whisper it to the audience and we'll find out what it is. <coughs> well, I find, I find that very interesting, but there must be more. <laughs> All right, now, here we go, panelists. Concerns something... Um, that he has, the best definition I can give you. We'll start the question. Let's start with Bess tonight, shall we? Bess? George, may I call you George? Yes. Could you possibly have your barber on the other end of that rope? No. <laughs> Imagine you'd have to carry him around with you. Uh, <laughs> that's a fantastic... Does that hurt? That's Not a bit. No. Uh, this thing...